Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Star Rail Theory and Speculation video. Today, I want to talk about the Path of the Veracity and its Eon Ouroboros. They are one of the oldest Eons, coming from the era of Leviathans, so they are bound to have some very interesting lore. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quests listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Ouroboros is the Eon of the Veracity, yet they are also a Leviathan. The Leviathans predated the Eon's existence in the universe, but I'll touch more on them in a bit. Like other Eons, Ouroboros has gone by many names, including the Drinker of Worlds, the Unsatisfied Devourer, and the Black Hole with Thought. To Ouroboros, life is a flickering fragment floating in the Sea of Void, destined to eventually return to the darkness from which it came. That darkness is located within the depths of their mouths. According to Herda, Ouroboros has vanished without a trace. Many people are in search of their whereabouts, including Herda herself. However, she doesn't wish to track them down personally, leaving that task to Ron May and Skrulum instead. Now, what's really interesting about Ouroboros is their path, the veracity. It seems to focus on the idea of returning the Void back to the universe, an idea which seems to somewhat cross with the other paths in their eons. Nanook the Destruction, Terminus the Finality, and Ix the Nihility all seem to share similar views to that of Ouroboros, the Veracity. However, all of these eons are able to coexist, which seems a bit strange. After all, Enna the Order was assimilated by Jipei the Harmony due to overlapping path concepts. It could be that these eons tolerate each other to reach their goal at a quicker pace, or it may be that Enna was assimilated by Jipei due to the concept of harmony itself. I will bring this idea up again later on in the video, but for now, I want to move back in time to discuss some cosmic history. As I've said, Ouroboros is both an Eon and a Leviathan. With that in mind, I want to discuss what the Leviathans are and their history. Unfortunately though, the history of these creatures is shrouded in mystery, thanks to two main factors. One factor is the Eon of the Enigmata, Mythos, who goes around messing with historical records. The other factor is the IPC, whose faith in Klopoth the Preservation has led to inaccuracies surrounding the Leviathans. Despite these obstacles, we do still know a bit about the Leviathans, so let's go over that. Before the Eons were born, gigantic creatures known as Leviathans roamed the galaxy. However, a tragic event known as the Dusk Wars would soon take place. The Dusk Wars were described as a catastrophic disaster that likely took out most of the Leviathans. According to the IPC, Klipoth ascended as the Eon of the Preservation as the Dusk Wars drew to a close. Again though, the IPC's faith in Klipoth has led them to bending the truth of history. Many archaeological discoveries have proven that Leviathans were still active in the early days of the Preservation. Either way, Leviathans did become extremely rare following the end of the Dusk Wars. Despite this, there is a theory that suggests that the Leviathans may have influenced some of the creatures that we've seen throughout our journey so far. The Leviathans' conception theory states that some elder Leviathans were run aground after the Dusk Wars. As they slumbered, their decomposed cells became the seedbed for organic organisms. Additionally, their dissipating life force became different species of wandering astral spirits, including both the Heliobi and the Wababoos. However, not all scholars agree with this theory, and more and more of them have begun to publicly denounce the theory in recent years. Even if that theory isn't true, Leviathan corpses are still used to create some form of life. The Antimatter Legion uses Leviathan corpses at their Warforge to create tramplers and even doomsday beasts. Other than that, there are still some cultures who worship Leviathans as opposed to worshipping the Eons. We haven't met any of these Leviathan worshippers yet, but I'm sure we will in the future. Despite the fact that there are cultures who worship the Leviathans, there are no known followers of Ouroboros or the Veracity in general. In fact, it's the only path we know of with no known followers or descendants. Similar paths such as the Destruction, the Finality, and even the Nihility all have their own factions, so why not the Veracity? 
Well, it could be possible that these factions do exist, and that we just haven't received any lore about them yet. Given the fact that some cultures do worship leviathans, and the fact that Ouroboros is both an Eon and a leviathan, there has to be some civilization or faction out in the universe that follows the path of the veracity. In my recent video on the lore of the Xianxiao flagships, I mentioned the ancient activated planet known as Rahu. This was the planet that devoured the Xianxiao Songsheng in year 6300 star calendar. While Rahu was brought to life by Shu Hu, an emanator of the Abundance, its title definitely fits the veracity quite well, that being Devourer of Worlds. As such, if it's still around, Rahu could potentially follow the veracity in the present day. Other than that though, it doesn't seem like the veracity would have a lot of followers, and there is a pretty good reason why. According to Herda, Ouroboros is actually quite reserved and uncommunicative. They do occasionally attempt to speak, though this tends to result in unintended consequences. When they try to speak, they end up accidentally consuming whoever it is they are speaking to. Therefore, those who follow and meet Ouroboros may have met an unfortunate end by attempting to communicate with their Eon. The reason why Ouroboros has no followers would simply be because they ate them all. Now then, for the last section of this video, I want to talk about what role Ouroboros could play in the future of Star Rail. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the Path of the Veracity may somewhat overlap with the Paths of the Destruction, the Finality, and the Nihility. I think that this overlap, especially with the Destruction, could come into play later on. Nanook the Destruction has been set up as the main antagonist of Star Rail. In order to defeat them, we're going to need as many allies as we can get, which might end up including some other Eons. Ouroboros could be one of these Eons, with them hoping to get rid of Nanook so that their path isn't overlapping with as many other paths. Additionally, Ouroboros might feel a personal reason to go against Nanook. I mentioned earlier that the Antimatter Legion uses Leviathan corpses to create tramplers and doomsday beasts. Ouroboros, being a Leviathan themselves, may get angry at Nanook for using their fallen brethren to create their own army. The only problem with this idea is that Ouroboros has currently vanished without a trace. In order for them to fight against Nanook, we would have to track them down. According to Herda, it is conceivable that they may still have a reaction to the Shattered Starbait, a curio from the era of Leviathans. Before the Dusk Wars, the exploded fragments born of the expansion of disordered nebulas could be used as lures, and their unique aroma of cosmic dust could attract Leviathans to feed on them. However, the lore has now lost its original effectiveness, and no one was ever able to glimpse the form of the Leviathans again. Still, there is a way for us to find out how to use the Shattered Starbait to its full potential. How exactly would we do that? Well, a simulated universe expansion, of course. Closer to the end of the game, we could get a simulated universe expansion focusing on Ouroboros, the Leviathans, and the Dusk Wars. With this expansion, we would not only learn about Ouroboros and the Leviathans as a whole, but we could also learn about the rise of Klepoth, the Preservation. Additionally, this could allow Herda and the others to learn more about the Shattered Starbait and help them bring it back to its original effectiveness in the present day. This could then allow them to summon Ouroboros from the edges of the cosmos, getting them to help fight against Nanook. Of course, this plot would have to happen much later on in the story. After all, Nanook is set up to be the main antagonist of the game, and we haven't even met an Eon face to face yet. I feel like we would most likely meet a few other Eons face to face before summoning one back from the edges of the universe. Still, this plotline is definitely a possibility, and it would be an amazing concept to see in game. The simulated universe expansion could be introduced way before this storyline as well, setting us up for what's to come. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on Ouroboros the Veracity. I really enjoyed discussing Ouroboros, and I can't wait to talk about more eons in the future. If you want more lore about Star Rail in the meantime, I recommend my video on the 10 Stonehearts, Flagships of the Xianxu Alliance, Adrill of the Beauty, and Izumo. I would love to hear what ideas you all have for Ouroboros and the Veracity in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.